I'm an author, I'm a speaker, I'm a consultant, I'm a coach, I'm a musician, I'm a magician, I'm a strong man, and I do pretty much whatever I feel like because I'm following my passion, and my life calling is to inspire you to follow your passion too. About five years ago, I decided to be a musician. I had been interested in it, it was on my bucket list, but I didn't really pursue it. I was too busy doing other things like writing books and appearing in movies and doing TV shows and such. But I decided as I neared the age of 60 that it was time for me to go and pursue those dreams that were on the list that were left undone. So when I recorded my very first singer-songwriter album called Strut, I had arranged for some of the powerhouses in the world of music to come and support me. I have Daniel Barrett, who's with the award-winning band Porter Davis, who's made 80 albums of his own. This is the last album where you get to call yourself a newbie. With 16 albums, you're not going to be able to pull the newbie card anymore. And I had Glenn Fukunaga on bass, who's played for Dixie Chicks and Robert Plant. They don't call me Mr. Aloha. That's my buddy. He's Mr. Aloha. I've been playing bass for about 50 some odd years, still getting better. <laughs> I have my drummer, who has the same name as me, Joe Vitale. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And this man has made 200 and some albums. I really didn't know Dr. Joe Vitale, but I knew of him because I kept getting emails from people going, asking me questions about how to deal with their their inheritances and how to deal with wealth. I'm a drummer. Why are you asking me this stuff? Then I find out, oh right, Dr. Joe, they think I'm Dr. Joe, I thought. But I had the wild idea, I said, you know, what would it take to get that guy to be our drummer? And we both thought, we just have to ask. So I wrote to him and I said, look, I'm gonna be in the studio these two particular days to record Strut, are you available for that? He said he was booked the entire year for every single day, except those two days. And he is on every one of my singer-songwriter albums, and I will never record a singer-songwriter album without the other Joe Vitale. We're in the, the middle of making the album right now, and we, we make these albums at warp speed. They're pretty much at an accelerated rate and an intensive rate. And I get the band to come in because people like Drummer Joe live in another state, and he has to fly in. <laughs> vibe is unparalleled and always a pleasure. Just so happy to, to be here. The music just kind of flows. So I'm excited because I can see the evolution of my ideas and my songs taking form and I can hear some of the music that's being brought to life. There'll be days of struggle, there'll be days of strife. I'm smiling as I think about one of the songs going on the new album because I've been a fan of Melissa Etheridge for over 20 years. In fact, I was a card-carrying member of her fan club at one point, saw her a bunch of times in concert, and as it worked out, I ended up having a private two and a half hour songwriting lesson with her at her home, in her home studio. I was absorbing everything she was teaching me about writing songs, about singing, about performing, and she was totally present totally open, totally generous, just opened her mind and was really interested in me. And as a result of all of this, all the songs on the new album, including the title song, The Great Something, were influenced by that meeting with her. Be days of love. One day when I was in the studio with Daniel and I was saying I was struggling with writing songs, I had some ideas but I wasn't sure how to flesh them out. And he said, well, it's easier to remember them than it is to create them. And I went, what? <laughs> It's easier to remember them than it is to create them. And he went on to tell me about what he calls the remembering process. And it's a process of mentally going off into the future, past where you've already created a song, and then kind of remembering back to where you created it. And I liked it so much, and I wrote so many songs because of it, that I said, Daniel, have you ever thought of writing a book about this process? And he hadn't. And I said, well, I'm an author. And together we co-authored The Remembering Process, which has been a fantastic book that Hay House published, 40-some five-star reviews on Amazon, and we've helped a lot of people write music, write different things, and to be more creative because of The Remembering Process, Daniel Barrett's idea. What I also discovered, though, is that when you go for something you've never done before, you have a whole lot of fears, you have insecurities, you have limiting beliefs. 
It's because you're stretching out of your comfort zone. And I did that too, but I learned a secret about doing it. When you delete all of the mental programming that's stopping you from going for your dreams, you accelerate your process and your progress to success. And you remove those limitations, you can then leap forward and achieve the dreams you've always wanted. That's what I've done with music. This is our best one yet. Each one has been the best one yet. It has been a steady curve. This is fantastic. I don't think the band has ever been this comfortable playing together. It's like we just fell into um, like a comfortable pair of jeans. We just kind of know who we are, know what we're here to do. It's fantastic. The music is incredible. Thank you, everybody. We're it's doing great. amazing. Yay. To Joe. Yay. To Joe. Joe. Cheers. Thanks.